project organization in Next.js 15. Well, the first thing to mention here is that there, there's no right or wrong way to do this. I have set up projects in so many different ways and ultimately a lot of different ways work. And in my experience, the most important thing is just making sure however you decide to organize your project to keep it consistent and make sure that it is consistent across your team. And, you know, when it comes to stuff like this, and this kind of also maybe includes different code formatting strategies and stuff like that, if you can automate any of the stuff, it's generally a good idea, whether that's with like pre-commit hooks or GitHub actions or stuff like that. If you can do some of that, even when it comes to organizing your project, I think some of that stuff can really be helpful, but I'll kind of give you my loosely preferred method towards the end of this video, but I want to cover three methods that Next.js in their documentation recommend for at least options for organizing your project. And if you want to read more about this in their docs, you can look at it here. I will make sure to put this link in the description below. Currently, you're going to see that this is looking at the Canary version, the V15 Canary version. So I'm guessing when you're watching this, Next.js has released Next.js 15 on October 24th. I'm recording this just before that, uh, just because I have some different stuff going on and I need to make sure I'm still getting some, some videos out for you guys. So feel free to read more about what they have in here. But in this Next.js project, we're going to go over these three ways. So this is Editor Ryan here, and I just realized that I didn't even kind of go over what I was going to go over when I went to the Next.js docs. All I was going to say is I highly doubt that anything is going to change between the Canary version and the actual official Next.js 15. So I think all this material definitely still applies to Next.js 15 because this does go directly from their docs for the release candidate of Next.js 15. But if there is any changes, I'll make sure to, of course, create an updated video. And you can, of course, check the docs as well just to make sure. But I, I think that everything's going to be good to go. All right. Enjoy the rest of the video. One way of doing things is storing things in the kind of root level of your project outside of your app directory. So right here, I have the app directory, but in our project directory, we could store like a components folder here and then keep all of our components in this components folder. We could create another folder here and we could create like a lib folder and all of these exist outside of our app directory where we have like our pages and our routes and stuff like that. That's an acceptable way to do things. An alternative approach to that, so option number two would be keeping things just in the top level of your app folder. So I can move these inside my app directory. And then my components and lib folder exist within my app directory. There's no need to worry about these becoming public routes within your app directory because all you have to do is make sure you don't add a, add a page.js or ts file within any of these folders, fonts, components, lib. As long as I don't add a page dot file within these folders, the user that's using your application isn't going to be able to go to like forward slash components and forward slash lib. Like it won't become public if you don't add that page dot file. So this is perfectly safe to do. So you could add them in the top level of your app directory. And then another way to do this, and this is a way that you can maybe like co-locate things a little bit more, is to split project files by feature and route. So say you have a route called settings within your app directory. So forge slash settings and say you had a settings page within this. Well, it might make sense if you have some components that are specific to your settings page, you could create a components folder within your settings page. And that would allow you to see like at a glance, okay, these are the components that you're going to be using only for your settings page. However, you still might have a higher level components folder to where these are going to be the components that you use throughout your entire app. But these are the ones for your settings page. And then you might have another route called, I don't know, blog. And then you could create a new folder within your blog. And then these could be the components that you only use within your blog route. They're specific to your blog. So this would be splitting your project files by feature and route. So 
to go over those three options, all, all three are fine options, I think, and they all can work. It's going to be keeping your project files outside of your app directory. So within the root of our project, this is a snapshot project that I created for some other video, but we could create them outside of the app directory. We could create them only at the top level of our app directory. And then the third option would be splitting those project files down into our routes and other features. Now, my preferred approach, it used to be just creating like a top level components folder within an app directory and creating my project files in just the top level of my app directory. But recently, I would say I lean more towards splitting out project folders and files by route. So doing what I did here, so settings forward slash components, these are going to be components for settings. These are components for blog. And of course, it could be other project files as well that aren't just routes. And the reason that I kind of like that is as I've worked in more and more just large scale projects with sometimes hundreds of different components, it just, for me anyways, becomes a little bit too much to have like one top level components folder, whether it's outside of your app directory or within your app directory. Like for me, that just becomes a little bit too unruly and a little bit too much. And it makes it, you know, a little bit difficult to navigate to where in those projects, what we've done is kind of split things by feature and route a little bit more. And also sometimes we have components where we share across our entire application, like maybe just a button component, a generic button that we use across our entire app that will go in just app forward slash components. But if we have specific components for like a blog page or settings, then we create a components folder there and within settings and create components for those. And for me anyways, that organization tends to be a little bit easier, especially within a large scale project. Now, if you're just creating like a, I don't know, uh, more of a demo project for your, your portfolio, you're just, you know, you want to code something out for fun. I think any of those approaches are going to be totally fine, but it can be helpful to use one consistent approach every time. And for me, I've, I've more so started leaning towards splitting things out by route and feature. It can be, I wouldn't say confusing, but at first it takes a little bit to get used to if you're, if you're not used to it already to have like several different components folders within your application, like that can take a little getting used to, but really it seems a little weird at first, but you'll, you'll get used to it. And it, it does end up making quite a bit of sense. But most importantly, like I said, whatever your preferred approach, I think that's totally going to be fine as long as it's consistent, as long as your team adheres to it. And, you know, I, I'm with you. It could be tempting to like, okay, I have a, I'm already in this components folder. I created a component, but I want to use that component now elsewhere in my application. It can be tempting to just like export it from this settings components folder into your blog, but the best approach is to push that into a kind of the root of your app and then feed those into your blog and settings to keep things consistent. So with any of these, it's really important to make sure that you're consistent and uh, trying to catch yourself when you're just trying to take the uh, easy way out, so to speak. So yeah, those are my thoughts on it. I don't want this video to be too long, but let me know in the comments below what your preferred approach is. Maybe I missed a approach that's really good. Generally, I, I don't have very strong opinions on whatever you decide to do here. Like I said, as long as it's more or less consistent across your team and throughout your different projects. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in that next one.